Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from MyGS Electronics and today we are going to be continuing with uh, Mitsu uh, phew, almost a Mitsubishi, uh, Schneider Electric uh, ATV 320 drive. We're going to be running a drive today in a remote control using 2-wire control, 3-wire control and also we're going to be uh, I'm looking at using the potentiometer and go through some macros, some uh, setups and some parameter changes and get ourselves a bit more familiar what else is in the drive and how to work it. And if you haven't seen the last video, we're gonna commission the drive and do the auto tune and run semi local control and things like that. That video is gonna be in description below. Also, all the parts and everything that we're using in these videos and manuals, of course, manuals, there's gonna be two of them, uh, one for the installation, one for the um, uh, programming, all that information you'll be able to find in description below. And as usual, before we, uh, before we get started, guys, if you haven't checked out the um, website i just like on website or our ebay page where most of the items are there with uh, quite a lot of it items are short plus industrial electronics you are able to find them in there if you wish to uh, purchase any and uh, of course if you are looking to sell and go to short plus talk to burn get in touch and uh, we are here yeah, ebay website or most uh, most often like people do uh, through a link on my linkedin page which is going to be in the link description below as well so without further ado let's get started all right the wiring for the first uh, system is uh, first uh, station that we're going to be using is done and the first one we're going to be doing is a, a two wire control and the station is going to look like that so uh, here we go. So it's going to look like that. We're going to be using an emergency stop and these two buttons in here. One is going to be for uh, uh, forward and one's going to be to reverse. Usually most of the most of the drives they have select a switch selected between uh, reverse and forward. Schneider has separated. So uh, first one, uh, the first switch, uh, digital input one is going to be for the run forwards and digital input is going to be running backwards. And also we're going to be using the jog button and our speed controller. And a speed controller is from one to 10 kilo ohms. Any of those uh, potentiometers will do. 10 kilo ohm is the maximum. So, and uh, for the wiring, unfortunately for the jog button, we had to do some additions inside the system. So uh, for the wiring, zoom in. So my 24 volt signal that comes from the drive is uh, a, it's coming to a normal close contact, which is our stuff pretty much more or less what it does. It removes the power for all the, all the switches. And from there on, it sort of uh, distributes the power to uh, all other switches. So obviously the, the, this one down here, the first uh, normally close, normally open contact is gonna be for our run forwards. And second one's gonna be for uh, run reverse, so digital input for run, run forward, digital input for two for run four uh, backwards, and digital input three is going to be for a, a um, running the jog. Also, you can add this of digital input four, okay, it can be your trip reset, and uh, I can't remember what the digital input five was. So, the, the more things can be done, but for the jog, to be able to jog it, you will require a one of these being on at the same time to pretty much tell the drive which way do you want the jog happen. I have installed additional uh, contact block in here, which is under one button. So as that one button is going to get pushed with these two together, he will activate the run forward as well. And if you want another jog button for the jog go the other way, you're more than welcome to add that one and that will be jogging the other way. And obviously we have a, a Schneider Electric, a uh, potentiometer that are going to looks like that show you where that goes and that are going to uh, for our 10 volts in here so it's going to be a 10 volts a1 and com and uh, uh, the combinations depending on what potential that you're going to be using so uh, make sure uh, you you keep changing them around until you get desired result the potential that is responding so uh, regarding the di digital inputs uh, you can use the macros and to, to go to the macros is quite straightforward it is config uh, and i believe in this one in here and we are using just the general one so all the macros in here you can find that in the manual i think i showed that in the first video and whichever the macro this is a general in here whatever your macro you select just hold it until he just stops flashing and, and jumps back to where he was and that way he has selected the macro 
any sort of uh, where's that page I'm just gonna show it it's, the macros are quite not so there is almost, almost everything there what you need is going to be there sort of it gives you the page in the page 83 in a programming manual this will pretty much tell you what each thing does per each macro so uh, for that and for the jog button to be able to uh, uh, change the jo uh, edit the jog frequencies and things like that uh, we will need to go to a uh, jog parameter which you can find information about on page 178 in uh, I know the zoom is quite big, 178, uh, where we can need to go to the functions, so config, full, and all the way to functions, and then functions go down to a jog, and in the jog setting you can have a look at it where it's being assigned to, and in here, here in, in here, in all the functions, I'm going to talk, to, I'll talk about input uh, assignments in a minute, uh, in here you can uh, sort of uh, select which where you want the jog to work from and in in there you can uh, sort of uh, jog forwards you can tell him uh, what's free speed to use and I'm not sure what is that for but yes uh, jog uh, this is where you edit uh, not here but this is where you edit not here Ooh, we're gonna keep that on the three and then we edit our frequency in there pretty much. That's how you edit your jog frequency. And obviously we did spoke about in the last video how to edit uh, all the other frequencies and uh, reference points. And uh, that, having said that, let's get to the digital input uh, assignment. If you see in here, there's a whole list what can be assigned to your digital inputs. Not all of them can, depending on the, on the, on the, on the functionality. It is quite uh, awkward. So. If you go to the parameter configs and then you go to full and then you go to I.O. You can see in here. So uh, in here you select your what kind of wire control you're going to be using and then uh, I tell you what what is being assigned to forwards. And that's going to be digital input one. What's been so basically this is where you can monitor what's been assigned to everything. So you can see down there L1. It's forwards. And let's say so, like L uh, L L three. Click on that, and so as you see, you know, there are jogs been assigned to. So you can sort of go in here and sort of monitor, have a look what what has been assigned to all of these uh, uh, inputs or outputs or whatever you are going to do. Because this is a sort of I/O monitoring. You can go in there and have a look what's been assigned. But you can't assign anything in there because all that is done in functions. So, and those functions are in here, and that's, oh, where's the, I think I printed out the whole group somewhere. Yeah, here we go. And it's, there's a whole group, let me zoom out a little bit. In those functions is the whole group of uh, se sections in here, what you, where you can assign all of these to whatever inputs you're gonna be, inputs, outputs, whatever you're trying to achieve can be set. We're gonna be using a little bit of those in the upcoming video. So uh, that's how you pretty much assign all your inputs. It cannot be done in IO, so you have to go into functions and in functions you just have to select the group and uh, it's just, it, it is a lot of muddle, 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 I call it. So, but for the purpose of run, let me put the station together and show you how that runs. Right, and in uh, form in, uh, in form of any wiring diagrams, unfortunately, I could not find anything in uh, any of the standard manuals. But probably there is some, but I could not find it. So you pretty much just your yeah, common sense has to prevail, and then you are pretty much on your own to wire it up. So I already showed you how this is wiring done. So uh, as you can see, we put in a run mode, which is the, which is our uh, going forward. And our potentiometer response time is excellent, so uh, let's just go to like that. And as you can see, if I try to go reverse, it will not work. It requests you to turn one of them off, and there we go. Once that is off, the other one will go. So uh, by turning that off and uh, clicking your uh, jog button, I am going 10, 10. Uh, frequency at the same time so that's how the jog button works so having done that let's crack on with the three wiring control
Okay, as for 3 wire control, there's only one thing we need to do. We need to change a uh, sort of a configuration of inputs from 2 wire, 3 wire control. You can find that information in a page 85 in instructions manual. Basically, installation and uh, no interface with the programming manual. As you can see, there's two diagrams of what each thing does. So, in the station we're going to be using, it's going to, I'm going to show you that in a minute. But first, let's sh show you how to change the parameter. Go to the uh, configs, full. And they go all the way down to IO and TCC. Go in there and you can sort of select which one uh, you want. Three seats, that's for three, three wire. And hold it. Saved. Done. Now he has reconfigured the inputs to work a little bit differently. And the station we're going to be using looks like a that. I had to add additional button because again, this, this drive works differently because uh, reverse and forward switch is a different so it, it works with the button i'll show you how that works in a minute so the controls the wiring uh did you uh, 24 volts coming to our e-stop going through the e-stop goes to the another normally closed contact which is our stop button the power gets powder and from the stop button number two is going back to digital input one so effectively our digital input one now becomes normally closed and needs to be not be normally closed or it won't start and from there on it sort of powers up to two buttons and one of them is for the start which goes for digital input 2 and obviously uh, start forwards to digital input 2 and start reverse it'll be digital input 3 that's pretty much how that is wired and also we have a uh, potentiometer Schneider electric potentiometer which goes back to 10 VARIAI1 and COM and again, as I said in the previous, uh, previously, depending how you set it up, uh, keep keep change, keep swapping those cables around in there till you get the desired result. So the potential motor reacts, and it has to be uh, below ten, uh, between one uh, one kilo ohm to ten kilo ohms. So let me put the station together and show you how that works. Okay, station is all put together. Here's the station. So start forwards. I press the start. And potentiometer obviously does his business and you can't go straight to the in reverse and you can go back straight to uh, reverse and both of them will start whichever button you have uh, clicked I want to start reverse it will go in reverse I want to start forward it goes on as you can see as well with, with, with clicking one button you can pretty play around with it I mean, it's weird as hell but there we go, that's how 3 wire control works. Uh, that will be it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope I covered as much as I can for 2 wire 3 control. Obviously, we have covered all the how to set up the frequencies and everything like that in the last video, so definitely check out if you want to see a bit more how the menu works and things like that. So we've done 2 wire, 3 wire, and also potentiometer, and there's obviously a lot, lot, lot more this drive has and uh, got to give. We are here just uh, scratching the surface what this drive is capable to do, but in most uh, general applications, this is all we are going to be using this drive for and when it becomes a lot smarter obviously there's a, a lot a lot a lot of information to be obtained from manual and manual is very detailed full of information everything you're going to need is all in there so having said that that will be it for this video in the next video we're going to be doing a uh uh, different uh, type of frequency control with two up and down buttons and then we're going to be looking into setting up the uh, 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 multi-frequency setup so ladies and gentlemen if you like the video please smash that like if you didn't smash the dislike comment below let me know what you don't like what you don't uh, what you like what you don't like because uh, any uh, information or constructive criticism or whatever you guys want to put down there helps out for me to improve the videos other than that ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video